G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different to the uh, recent formatting, sort of a look back to um, you know, a couple of years where tier, ma tier makers were quite hot and I, uh, I quite enjoy tier makers. It's a good visual tool for trying to, uh, to rank things. So what we're going to do in today's video, and it may be a, uh, the start of a little mini series I do, uh, depending on the popularity of the video, we'll be taking a look at respective drafts and uh, trying to categorize players based on how good I think they are. So today we're going to start with 2017, uh, which was a draft that I took a lot of note in. The Eagles had uh, something like five picks in the top 40. So I remember it quite well and uh, in today's video what we're going to do is rank the top 25 draft picks from that particular year. So it's not perfect. There are obviously some players outside the top 25 that were probably worth including, but I couldn't include all something like 60 players. So we're a few years uh, removed, uh, well, five, six years now. That's uh, that's flown quick. From the 2017 draft, and so we have some reasonable data. There's a handful of players in the top 25 that were already delisted. So we're gonna have a crack at uh, ranking the players that were taken on the top 25 that night in two categories. And you guys can let me know in the comments what you think you agree with or what you disagree with. As always, I will give a little plug to the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. You can get 20% off and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout on their wonderful website and grab yourself anything from, you know, boxes and colognes all the way to the Lawnmower 4.0, which is their premium body hair trimmer that has got a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, an LED light to help you see what you're doing. And uh, it's also waterproof, which is really handy because the shower is the best place to do that sort of thing. Previously, I would have used, you know, the balcony out here, but unfortunately, the neighbors complained. So do yourselves a favor, use a discount, and you'd also be helping out the channel. So here we go, guys. This is a tier maker that I whipped up. The top 25 prospects in the 2017 draft. Now, the photos aren't perfect, but I'm going to tell you which players they are because some of them have their heads decapitated in the images below. But I've categorized five different ranks. So we've got elites, you know, absolute top liners. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and change that to top liners because uh, elite can be a little bit messy because then you, it's hard to actually define uh, elites and perhaps and top liners isn't any better, but I don't know. I just wanted to change it, right? Then you've got the genuine guns who are probably not quite uh, on that top level, but are better than good. And good is obviously um, the middle level of here. And that is a player that genuinely contributes to their AFL club. Average and spud, again, the spuds are probably just the ones that kind of really showed nothing. And average are the ones who potentially are still on an AFL list, but uh, are largely forgettable players with all due respect. So we're gonna crack on with the top 25 prospects. And one thing I like to do with tier makers is pick one for each category um, so that everyone can get a bit of a baseline of what is what, and then it makes the rest of the video easier. So let's start with the top liners. And the first one that comes to mind is Andrew Brayshaw, who I think is probably the best player from this game given draft. Um, he has, well, he won the MVP last year. He's a consistent all Australian quality midfielder. He could win a Brownlow one day. Clear best player from this draft, I would say. There's still a bit of time left and some of the talls could really catch up. But for now, Andrew Brayshaw, absolute top liner. Then we'll go with Genuine Gun. And this is a player that I think is uh, obviously absolutely fantastic as what he does, but is not necessarily uh, considered in the absolute upper echelon. And a player that I'd probably think of is Jack Higgins, okay? You know, he's having a, a pretty good year as a small this year. He's been really important to St Kilda's uh, finals hopes and he's been dangerous, but I don't know if I'd consider him uh, an absolute top liner for his respective position, but he's a genuine gun. A player that is just merely good and probably not quite on the uh, genuine gun level is probably Cam Rayner. Obviously, he's had a up and down start to his career, although it's been five or six years now, uh, five seasons, six seasons. And he's shown, you know, real talent at AFL level, particularly this, this year. I think uh, some of his one-on-one game, his goals now, uh, he could easily elevate himself into genuine gun, but the output hasn't quite been there. So for now, he's good. He could be genuine gun. A player that I'll say is probably average is Callum Coleman-Jones. Uh, obviously a project tall uh, from this draft, top 25 pick. In fact, I think he was around about pick 25, one of the last picks taken uh, out of everyone here, and hasn't set the world on fire after being traded to North Melbourne. He could still improve. Obviously, I'm allowing for that, but from what we've seen so far, he's average, but he's certainly not a spud. Someone is like a, a spud would probably have to have been delivered listed already. Um, and with all due respect, I want to put Jared Brander in here. Um, I've obviously, pick 13 on this particular draft, uh, sort of thrown around the field as a wingman and then a forward. And then he left West Coast because the opportunities weren't there. And then he became a wingman at GWS anyway, and largely really didn't make any impact at AFL level. So those are our five bandings. We'll be able to move through the bandings a little bit quicker now. Darcy Fogarty, let's put him as a genuine gun. Um, obviously not quite elite for his position yet. It's a little bit competitive. Uh, he's in one of the best forward lines in the competition. In fact, I think he's 
genuinely the best forward line in the competition. Fantastic one-on-one -on -one player. He's a genuine gun. Uh, who else have we got here? Ed Richards is an interesting one. I'm going to put him in good for now. There is a chance that he gets uh, an All-Australian jumper because of his current form, but he hasn't really had the consistent career to date for me to say he's a genuine gun, but we may be having a different rating on him in 12 to 18 months' time. Who knows? But I'm a big fan of Ed Richards, but for now, just a, just a good player, potentially better. I'm going to show some bias here and put Oscar Allen as a top liner. Uh, not the best player in the draft, but we're seeing now, you know, he missed a whole year last year, and we're seeing now he is he's kicked multiple goals in, I think, all but one game this year, and we know how bad West Coast is. If you watch West Coast closely, he's one of our absolute best players, and I think he is a top liner. He hasn't had a high finish in the Coleman yet, but that's probably due to a lack of opportunity. Obviously, missed last year. Uh, mind you, he probably wouldn't have won the Coleman last year, considering how bad West Coast were, but I'm intrigued to see how good this guy will be when the Eagles are actually breaking even in inside 50s. Uh, Aiden Bonner is probably an average player, you know, not really set the world on fire. I was pick 11 to GWS, traded for peanuts to North Melbourne, and, um, you know, maybe I'm rating a bit harsh there, but I think clearly above Spud and below good. Uh, another Spud would probably be Will Walker, who uh, has been delisted for a couple of years now, and I really don't know anything about him. Adam Chera, he is a genuine gun. Um, is he a top liner I don't think quite yet um, but he is in career best form right now and has the potential to be that A grade midfielder but uh, probably on the cusp and not quite yet so I'll say he's a genuine gun Will Powell is another player that I think is good um, but in the same Ed Richards uh, camp as probably being have the potential to be a genuine gun and, and maybe fans who watch Gold Coast more closely than I do will have a different opinion but again obviously he had that horrific injury was it last year? I think it was last year he had that horrific injury which has set him back a little bit but had a good couple of weeks in the last uh, uh, Fortnite. He's in my uh, AFL Game Day Squad team, so go check out Game Day Squad while you're there. Has the potential to be a genuine gun, but at the moment is just good. Lockie Fogarty. Uh, I had to check whether this guy was still on an AFL list. He's played two games this year, and uh, you know he's been respectable, I suppose. But let's be honest, he's not a, he's not a good player. Um, he's probably going to get delisted, so average. Jaden Stevenson. I'm going to put in good, and uh, this might be controversial. I don't think he's as good as Will Powell or Ed Richards, but I think he's clearly above the three below him in that ranking. I think he's got a lot of uh, potential still at AFL level, and we've seen he is a bit of a front runner, and I say that respectfully because I think there are some good front runners out there, and I think if, if he played in a good team like he did at Collingwood, uh, he could return to some of that uh, game-breaking form we know he has, and I think we've seen an improvement here from Jaden Stevenson, so I think this is a little bit acknowledging potential rather than exposed form because he hasn't had a great uh, you know number of years really since like 2018, but I think there's a good player under there, so I'm going to say good, and I think he has the potential to go higher, but he's below Powell and Richards, that's for sure. Aaron Norton I'm going to put as a top liner, to be honest. Um, I think on his day, he is one of the most powerful, hard to stop forwards. Obviously, his goal kicking can be patchy. I think there's, there's common metal potential absolutely in Aaron Norton. I think it would be wrong to have him below Oscar Allen, I think, considering what he's demonstrated. Oscar Allen, probably the more well-rounded, complete forward. Aaron Norton, more of the game-breaking, high potential type, and probably more likely to win a common than Oscar Allen, to be honest. But they're both top liners, in my opinion. Matthew Ling, he got delisted, I think, a couple of years ago from Sydney, so he falls into the spot category. I didn't really see much of him at AFL level, which is disappointing from a former first round draft pick. Zach Bailey, genuine gun. I did consider top liner, but when you look at him statistically, probably doesn't have that same output as some of the guys I'm going to put ahead of him. But I think he's, you know, he's on that, certainly that Jack Higgins level. I think he's actually probably the, the player out of that genuine gun list that I'd probably pick first. Maybe Adam Chera at a stretch, actually. But Zach Bailey, not far behind. He is a match winner. I uh, absolutely love him a bit. I think he's a genuine gun. Definitely better than good. Starsevich also in the good category. The good category feels like it's going to be fleshed out a little bit here. But I think he's a pretty underrated, good running half back defender. Good skills, pace, physicality. I'd love him at West Coast. He is a good player. Lockie O'Brien, average. You know, he's still on AFL list, so he sort of scrapes through by the skin of his teeth. But um, obviously top 10 in this year's draft and really hasn't demonstrated the talent that is, um, you know, the equivalent of being a top 10 talent. Paddy Dow, is he a spud? I know he's, he's still on a list. He's still on a list. Gee, Carlton didn't do well in this draft, did they? Obviously they traded for Adam Chera, but drafting O'Brien and Dow, I think they were picked three and 10. Oh, and there's Fogarty as well, who they traded for. Do I move the other guys down? Is that harsh on Paddy Dow? He probably qualifies as average. Uh, he's technically on a list. Let's, uh, I'll give him, a, give him a break. And to be honest, I couldn't tell you who's a better player out of Lockie O'Brien and Paddy Dow. Um, I think O'Brien gets more games, but um, Dow's competing for a different position. So anyway, we'll move on. Hunter Clark, I think he's good. I think he's good, but he's on the lower end of good. He's 
He's not average. He's definitely better than that. He's, he's a good, reliable player for the Saints, um, but hasn't really taken that next step. And I was a big fan of him in his draft year because I thought he had the tools to be a very good AFL midfielder. Uh, he's a long way off genuine gun, but uh, on his day, he's a reasonable, consistent B-grade player. Um, you'd say he's good. LDU, I think, is a top liner. And again, this is a little bit more potential than actual output. At times this year, he's looked like the best stoppage player in the competition. And then uh, he's had off days. And naturally, he's going to get targeted at North Melbourne. So again, this one's a little bit more potential. But I would be taking him over Adam Chera if I had the choice. And uh, and that is a big compliment, to be honest. Nick Caulfield, oh, this one, I, I want to say decent. There is no decent. It's good or average. I think he's better than average. He's just been ravaged by injury um, and still has the potential to be uh, you know, a, a very good halfback, but um, obviously it's been a while since we've seen it consistently. Noah Bolter, you'd probably put him as genuine gun. I think uh, I think he's earned that. He is a very good, powerful, athletic key defender at Richmond, and um, I'd say genuine gun. Certainly not a top liner, but better than good, I would say. And Tim Kelly, I'm probably going to put in top liner as well. Uh, there is a lot of undue criticism on Tim Kelly purely because he gets mixed in with the debate about whether West Coast should have traded for him. But if you watch over the last couple of years, the amount of times Tim Kelly's lifted West Coast on the on his back, he's not going to get round low votes because West Coast get annihilated every week. So when you factor in his form at Geelong and then uh, maybe he, it took a little while to hit his straps at West Coast, I think if you watch West Coast closely now, um, he's certainly hitting his straps. So it's nice to see the Eagles have two top liners out of this draft. Mind you, we only drafted one of them in Oscar Allen. But I think that's fair. I think Oscar Allen and Tim Kelly are two of our best players. So there you have it, guys. That is my ranking. So the top liners from this draft were Brayshaw, Oscar Allen, Aaron Norton, LDU, and Tim Kelly. I think that's pretty fair. The genuine guns are Jack Higgins, Darcy Fogarty, Adam Chera, Zach Bailey, and Noah Bolter. In the good section, and when some of these have the potential to push up even further. And this is probably the part of the tier maker I expect to get the most criticism for. But Cam Rayner, Ed Richards, Will Powell, Jaden Stevenson, uh, Brandon Stasevich, Hunter Clark, and Nick Coffield. And I think... Jaden Stevenson will get criticized for being too high. And then I think those fans of Ed Richards and Will Powell will probably think they're a bit too low. Average, so these guys could still push up, although I don't really see it. You've got Callum Coleman-Jones, Aiden Bonar. Bonar? Bonar. My God, is that a Freudian slip? Lockie Fogarty, um, Paddy Dow, and uh, Lockie O'Brien. And I think Coleman-Jones is probably the one I'd pick out of that group. Uh, but it is a, a bit of stank there. And then the three spuds I put, um, and this the criteria was if they're delisted, they're going to go into spud. Uh, Jared Brander, Will Walker, and Matthew Ling. So as always, guys, I welcome your opinion, what I got right and what I got wrong in the comments section below. Let me know if you like this video format, even if you disagree with me. If you want me to see do other do other drafts, I probably will anyway, but it would be nice to hear that you actually like it if you did enjoy it. So as always, guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel watching the videos, subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks and catch up.